now. Okay, so once again, welcome, welcome to Carla and James Murray. And I'm just gonna share the screen. Hold on one second. Perfect. Okay, can you see that? There we go. Okay, well, thanks everyone for joining our very first curator talk about our free public workshop exhibition, Capturing the Faces and Voices of Mom and Pop Storefronts. And for those who are not familiar like with our work, we're first going to discuss how we came to document these small businesses in the first place. And then what is our motivation behind holding these workshops? And really for us, it's these traditional like mom and pop neighborhood stores have prevailed in some cases for over a century and they're rapidly disappearing in the face of modernization and conformity. And the once unique appearance and character of New York's colorful streets is suffering in the process. The neighborhood store has always been a place immigrants and a comfortable place where familiar languages are spoken, where ethnic foods and culture are present. And these shops are lifelines for the community vital to the residents who depend on them for a multitude of needs. When these shops fail, the neighborhood's definitely adversely affected because they set the pulse, life and texture of their communities. And for us, uh, our journey really began documenting the city streets in the mid 1990s. We were like combing many distant neighborhoods of the city, searching out its street culture. And despite, despite like returning to the same neighborhood over and over again in a very short time frame, what we began to see was some of these little neighborhood stores started closing. And then we would look around and we're like, wait, what happened to that small little candy store? We went in there we got a pack of gum and we spoke to the owner and she was so sweet. And then it was gone. And somehow the neighborhood didn't look the same anymore. It didn't right. feel the same anymore. It lost like all of like really to us, its charm, its originality. The very reason that we were attracted to it in the first place somehow seemed gone. Or we'd come across like neighborhood stores that were old, but they had like new signage, like they got remodeled, they got refaced, and the old original signage was torn down and substituted with like new shiny plastic awnings. And to us, that also changed the whole look and feel of the neighborhood. So we made it our mission. Oh, you can go on to the next one, Corinne. That was, that was perfect. We made it our mission to thoroughly document these small unique mom and pop stores when we first began to notice the alarming rate at which they were disappearing. And the slide that is being shown now is our first book on the subject, Storefront, The Disappearing Face in New York. And that was published in 2008, uh, really came out in January, 2009, but we wrote the introduction in 2008. And when we wrote the introduction, like one third of the 325 stores that were in that book and that 10 years worth of photographs. So it's like we started it, you know, like in the, the late 1990s, early 2000s, o over a third were already gone by the time the book was published in 2008. And today, I mean, I hate to even say the number in 2020, it's well over 85%, maybe even more because sadly with the coronavirus pandemic, more and more are closed every single day. And if you go to the next slide, Corinne, um, that's our follow-up book to Storefront, The Disappearing Face in New York. This is Storefront Two, A History Preserved. And that continues our journey um, that was published in 2016 of documenting these stores. And again, these are stores, like I guess you could say left off from where the first book, so they're the oldest one would be 2008, and then it goes up to about 2015, um, that's in that book. And well over one third of the book, the stores that are in this book are now gone. Yeah, so closing in on a half. Right. It's a it's a striking, striking number. And to us, like the neighborhood stores, they're everything. Like they're the backbone of the community. So seeing like this rapid, you know, pace of them going away, um, it just spurned us to like, okay, we have to just go out and just keep on documenting, help spread the word about their importance. And then if you go to the next slide. What we also did is we photographed, oh, there's Hudson, right? One of the people who joined the, the Zoom said, where's Hudson? So here's a photo of Hudson. Hudson's sleeping on his bed right now. He's tired. Yeah, he had a big day. <laughs> yeah, big day for Hudson. This is our New York Nights book. And the, our book, oh, oh, I just woke him up. He heard his name over and over again. So he just, he just popped his eyes open. But this book documents like mom and pop stores and theaters and bars all at night. So with, like it was capturing their neon beauty because we were really right. attracted to like 
the original um, neon signs and the hand painted um, displays in the window. So really that's like our little story. And right. for, for us, like we decided to hold these free public workshops, teaching others how to best document, um, document these mom and pop stores in starting in 2017. So this is like right. now 2020, we've been doing it for a few years. But if you go to the next slide, we face many unique challenges this year because of the coronavirus pandemic. Our first challenge was to transition from holding these workshops in person to creating a virtual online workshop because right. of you know, COVID. And the second challenge was to find participants who were willing to go out from the safety of their own home, like where, you know, leave quarantine, I guess you could say, right. and document these small businesses. So we had to like kind of change our, our, you know, what we were asking people to do. We said, well, if you don't feel comfortable going out, um, you know, perhaps you can draw the, the, the stores right. you know, like from a photo or, you know, from right. an online picture, you know, if you fit, physically can't go outside, but we were blown away. Everyone adapted, yeah. but we adapted, our participants adapted, and we were really blown away by all the participants work. So not only did they photograph the businesses, and we're going to talk a little in just a few minutes and right. show the work of our participants, but some of them actually went to the physical like mom and Location, pop store right. and they not only interviewed the owner, but they actively supported them by like either buying something to eat right. or buying a piece of merchandise or a gift card. So, I mean, that right. to us, like supporting these mom and pop stores, that's everything. They need your business. That's right. the number one way for them to survive despite what their rent is and everything like that is that they need customers yeah. so it was really hard this year because we had started the workshops initially just to get together with like-minded people in our neighborhood and throughout new york and have them go out and start appreciating storefronts and, and notice how special they were on their stuff by the, by themselves right that's what we so it's like sending a do. little group of us out um, right go out and and photograph the store you know in any way you can photograph the outside the inside right. go inside take a, a right. picture of a of a, of a item that they sell it, you know we really didn't have any restrictions right. if it's just the sign you want to photograph photograph the sign what, whatever like right. you felt a, a, you know strong Attracted attachment to, to. Right. right but you what we wanted people to go out and photograph the stores that were still in business yeah, because, in the second workshop everyone we would all get together again right and we would all kind of just talk Right, and, we would critique each what, other's work. Right, like, oh, what, and it was really a lot of fun. Right, what, what did you photograph? Like we all got together, so there was a lot of feedback. Like there was like, you know, it was like personal attention right. that we would give people. It was people. like a chat room, but in real life. Exactly, and <laughs> people would be like, oh, I'm having trouble getting in contact with the owner, and like right. we would try to help. Oh, we know the owner, don't worry, right. we'll, we'll call right. them for you. So it was a very hands-on right. thing. So, some had photography questions. And, right, so like whatever it was, we were willing to help so it was difficult i would say this, this year, year yeah. to do everything virtually because i don't know we're very yeah. like hands-on yeah. you know kind of we're people like, yeah, meeting everyone. exactly and for us we felt also it was important to speak with the store owner and try to get an interview from them because to us the story behind the photo or the drawing or whatever it is is equally as important as the photo or drawing themselves because that's when we're seeing little histories and gems about, oh, what makes their business? Why is this business in, um, still around for over a hundred years? And why did another one close? Like you can find out the reasons why. And we always liked that. So we kind of, you know, we had to transition, but like I said, we were really, really, yeah. really happy. I well, mean, yeah, honestly, the response was great. blown away. So yeah, let's get started and like go over some of the petitions in some artwork. Yeah. So. This is our first slide that we've had up. And this is Benito One. And this was photographed by participant Rhonda Cullum. And Rhonda, oh, is Rhonda with us? Oh, I hope she is. Rhonda beautifully captured this Italian restaurant. It's located on Mulberry Street in Little Italy. And it's been in business since 1968. These are the people who helped with my What is the name, James? Hello. Hi. It's owned by <laughs> welcome. two. Welcome. It's owned by two Italian um, brothers, Nick and James Barry, and they've had the same chef for close to thirty years. And we went and we um, spoke with James, and he told us even though they have the outdoor dining, and you can see in this photo, Rhonda went. You know. Yeah, uh, she captured it. Perfectly. She captured it perfectly. Their little outdoor dining setup. 
it's not enough to sustain the business because they can't um, survive with just like a few tables outside. I mean, now they have limited indoor dining, but they're still struggling. So we can't stress um, you know, enough that they need the business to right. survive. Whether if you can't go there, then you can support by buying a gift certificate. Um, some of the stores have merchandise, but we were so happy that Rhonda chose to you know, highlight something in Little Italy because a lot of people think, oh, Little Italy, they're doing fine. They probably own the building. No, no, they, these guys, they don't own the building. And also they're struggling because a lot of the business is based on tourism and right. there are no tourists anymore. Right, and so, she really captured the laid back atmosphere of the place. Definitely, Loved definitely. Yeah. So now I'm going on to our next slide from a, another participant. And this is Russ and Daughters Appetizers. And I'm sure a lot of you already know about this wonderful store on East Houston Street. It's an appetizing shop and this, was a beautiful, beautiful sketch by Joel Holland. And what Joel did is he told us that he didn't even go out to the st stores because of the virus, that he just like found what they look like online and just like looked at it and then he just drew it. So he, you know, he was able to adapt, yeah. adapt and like what socially distance, with, like right. whatever he felt comfortable with. And we couldn't be more, more pleased. Happy, yeah. it, it captures Russ and Daughters in its essence because it has such a beautiful neon sign and those little fish kind of, I think they were yeah. doing the downward dog pose, yeah, I like of, to say. Right. And it really just to us captured the essence of this beautiful family owned business, which by the way, is being run by fourth generation co-owners, uh, Joshua Russ Tupper and Nikki Russ Fetterman. And in a strange twist of fate, it's Nikki is the daughter descendant of the and daughters of Joel Russ who originally founded the shop and if you guys have never been there even though they own the building because they do own the building on East Houston Street but they're still struggling I mean just because a place owns the building doesn't mean yeah. that they're doing well okay no. they don't have to pay rent no no you still <laughs> have to pay taxes and and lots of other things employees. and then all your employees and so on and they're struggling because of a lack of street traffic and tourism. Right. But luckily they've transitioned to doing a lot of things, ordering online and uh, sending stuff all around the country. Right. So they've done their best to adapt, but they're, they're still struggling. So, you yeah, know- Yeah, it's really a sweet growing. It really is. It really captures the, the essence of it. So our next one is, an, our next slide is a, another perfect example- yeah, really like this. Of somebody just going the extra mile and this, photograph is by Pamela Dayton. And what she did is she went to Halo Bistro Cafe, which is on Broadway in Washington Heights. And she told us that she specifically chose, oh, hi, Pamela. Hi, yes, so she's joined she's and I'm glad. She's a great advocate for small business. Yes, she's a wonderful person. And she told us that she specifically chose Halo Bistro Cafe because in, this is her quote, in the short time they've been open, they've already been faced with a subway elevator closure that took away their access to half the neighborhood. And I went up there to Washington Heights and what they did is they closed the, the elevator yeah. that would take yeah. you to the street level. So you right. gotta like, if you wanna go to Halo Bistro Cafe, you gotta like walk around the long way around up a hill and <laughs> oh my God, you know, if, if anybody's not been to Washington Heights, it's not like lower Manhattan, it's, it's very hilly. I mean, it's the, yeah. you know, some of the highest points, I mean, definitely in Manhattan. I mean, maybe Staten Island's a little bit more hilly, but you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a walk, you know, when you have to go around the long way. So not only did Halo Bistro face the subway closure um, of the elevator that, you know, ruined the access to their restaurant, but then the coronavirus pandemic happened. So they were hit with like this double whammy. So she said that the owners are determined to keep it open and that she is extremely grateful. And what Pamela did is not only she photographed the exterior of the restaurant, but she ate there. And this is her photo of a colorful bowl of guacamole with mango and chips from this mom and pop restaurant. Yeah, the colors are beautiful. Yeah, they just pop and we just said, oh, this is perfect. Like we couldn't have been more happy okay. with what Pamela did because the, uh, we wanted everyone to just have the creative freedom, go out and photograph what you know what these stores mean to you and to us these colorful you know guacamole and chips yeah. just like you know coming off the plate like right. that it, it was perfect and Pamela wrote that the delightfully cheery tables and flowers 
set the tone for this delicious offerings on Broadway at 187th Street by internationally culinary center trained and co-owner Ora Maranta. Her internationally fusion food is evident in all the delicious handmade dishes prepared on site. So yeah, we were just so happy for her to support a local mom and pop yeah. business and photograph it so beautifully. Yeah, really Definitely good. job well done. So on to the next slide. Mm. Now this is Ray's candy store. Anybody who knows us knows we have to include some way uh, yes. in any talk, Ray's. Ray's. Now Ray's, this is a gorgeous, beautiful watercolor painting done by Nick Ledwitz. And hey, Ray. hey, Nick. Hey, Nick. Ray's, if you know Ray, Ray is an Iranian immigrant. He came illegally, jumped like off a boat. He was in the yeah. Iranian like um, army or na a navy, yeah. I guess it was, because he was on service. a boat, <laughs> service we'll say. And he jumped off like uh, when it was outside of uh, New York Harbor and he just came to the United States. And he became like in his mind, Ray Alvarez, but that's not his, his real name. That's just a name that he adopted and he purchased this business, this candy store in 1974. And it's been open every single day since then. And all night, it's one of the few places hours, yep. in the East Village. And it's right next to the library. It's on Avenue A, like just um, two blocks down from um, where the library is. And um, it's amazing, amazing place. Yeah, Ray because, works the graveyard shift. Yeah, Ray can be found. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure he's probably there right now. Um, uh, selling his egg creams and, and all the, the vignettes and all this delicious yep. food. I'm um, working the night shift at 87 years of 87 age. 87 years, yeah, and he's still and he carrying the virus. Heart surgery and everything, and he's still out there. So to us, like, right. raises everything. It's and a, what this drawing did was, again, it just captures just the feeling of being a raise. Right, like, the it, cheeriness, like it, those unless cheery Unless you've colors. been there and had Ray say hello and have Ray say, what can I get you? You don't realize, like, how cheerful it all is, and, and, and we really like the drawing, how it, how it, how it, imparts that it's great right and to us this this particular store we were so happy that nick drew this um and painted it because ray means everything to us because it's like an ad hoc community center because ray not only he oh by the way ray became an american citizen um not too long ago yeah, he took yeah. the test and uh you know he's a real american citizen now and one of the last year's participants had him at his ceremony. Yes, she, he attended the Had she a attended of Ray the ceremony. Getting, uh, yeah, his yeah. naturalization. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. But Ray is the sweetest person in the world. We've been there many times where someone comes in and they don't have like enough money to pay for the coffee that they just bought. And Ray's like, don't worry, honey, you'll pay me next time when you see me. You're cold, take your coffee. Yeah, and we've really been just there sweetheart. on like Thanksgiving evening, like yeah, across it was a the rainy, street. They it they was give rainy away free like turkey. Right on Avenue A to the right. to the homeless and the needy. Across and, the street, they were giving them out. Right, and Ray saw how cold everyone was waiting online, and and he gave them free coffee. Yeah, he started and just giving people coffee. Yeah, so that's I mean, Ray. Right, that, and that's what the drawings. Right to says us, to us that's what, you look at it and you're like, wow, that's sweet. Yeah, that's what that's what embodies. Um, that's a little picture of Ray up there too. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this is um, this was done by a, a local artist as well. It was it was just painted. Yeah, great uh, job, Nick. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. So the next slide is another photograph, and this is the Philip Williams Poster Museum, and it's done by participant Max Uli and Max this amazing poster shop which is on chamber street in downtown manhattan a lot of people may not even yeah, realize right. that there's a store that's 100 right. devoted to selling posters i mean right. where else in new york i mean really else in the world can you have a, right. a shop that just sells one thing right. growing and up our age the age we're at as teenagers we had posters right everybody had that's what you decorated your room with right. you know but these are more like fine art but still exactly it us back to those years of having posters Right, and for this particular shop, Mac went inside and when he took this photo, he, he also commented to us that it's enormous. Like it's uh, the sheer enormity of the shop itself. That They also have a website with over 501 pages of posters, he said, 
which are available for purchase, and they range from fifty dollars to twenty eight thousand yeah, dollars per what I'm poster. Saying, you know, so some, some of those posters, yeah, they're they're, fine art, yeah. they're mighty expensive, but. He um, said, Max said that he encourages everyone to visit this store because it's a true browser's dream, like the sheer number of posters they have. And if you can't go there and physically, you know, go downtown to the poster um, museum store, yep. you can, okay, you know, go yep. online, which is yep. really, really wonderful that he, you know, went that extra mile, went yep. in the store and found out all these facts so people can yep. support these places. And I love the time of day Mac took it and has that kind of orange glow inside it just looks warm yeah you can see like a little reflection from across the street so yeah, yeah that's something like that we always try light, to tell yeah. people you know that you can be mindful of the time that you take the photo because you can get a totally different appearance from yeah. the reflections that are you know right. that are in the window like haystacks <laughs> exactly exactly like monet haystacks right. so um next Great job. slide yeah, i love the store definitely mac went the extra mile now this Oh, Katz's Delicatessen, first of all, I'm sure everyone probably recognizes, this was done by our workshop participant, Nick um, Golubiewski. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, it's a mouthful. And he was super, super creative because not only did he sketch Katz's Deli, and you can see the sketch on the left, but he held it in his hand and took this photo and he lined it up perfectly. Yeah, so amazing. like the sketch <sighs> coincides like he could see on his sketch, he has the cats. Can you hear us again? Yes. Oh, oh good. Cool. Yeah, okay, I don't good. know. I don't know who <laughs> muted us, but somehow we got muted. Okay, back, okay. back to, uh, on. So this is Nick's beautiful, beautiful sketch of Katz's and photograph because, like I was saying, he sketched it and then he went there and he and he's holding it perfectly after he finished the sketch, lining it up yeah, with like so how cool. he drew it. Like yeah. I mean, that blew it blew us away yeah, yeah, because we're cool. like, how creative is that to not only take like our little tips that we gave in our free public workshop, which by the way, is still online. If everyone who's interested that did not participate in the 2020 yeah, you workshop, you can still watch our virtual workshop. It's free, it's on our YouTube channel, which is our James and Carla, J-A-M-E-S-A-N-D-K-A-R-L-A -E right. YouTube channel. You can just search for the Capturing the Faces right. and and we have, Voices the, we have a lot of them on Instagram too. Yes, we have an old page. We'll post right. it later. Yeah, it's at mom and pop storefronts is our Instagram page. So Nick, I mean, uh, honestly, when we saw this, we're just oh, like, oh. wow, he really, really like physically encapsulated yeah. everything that we are trying to teach everyone yeah, and with just... the workshop, like go out and document it and then not only did he do a photo, but he took a sketch and a photo. Yeah, so it's it a great like, sketch by itself. Yeah, exactly. But then we have it with the background. It just was really cool. We really, really, really were happy. Right, and Katz is, is very near and dear to our heart. And yeah. although they own the building that they're located in, I mean, like they're not in danger of, of being closed because of a rent increase or greedy landlord, they're still struggling. In fact, they've adapted to survive the coronavirus pandemic by providing their own delivery service app Right. and offering outdoor dining for the first time in its 132 year history. 132 years. Yeah, of selling their pastrami and their first corned time. beef. They've yeah. never done outdoor dining. I mean, they survived the Great Depression, the the, the Spanish flu pandemic. Spanish I flu, mean, 9-11. Right, you name it, this this is this business has survived I it. I mean, and yeah, and they still had to adapt. So yeah, um, definitely Katz's is a wonderful place to support yeah. as and well. that's such a great sketch. Beautiful. So, yeah, I love it. Our next slide, this is and La Bonbon. blocks the hotel, someone said. No, yes. So that was a good one. That, that's true. Yep. La Bonbonnier. Oh, yeah. Photographed by Sophia Michelin. Brunch spot. Oh, uh, Sophia captured beautifully the way La Bonbonnier has had to adapt for the coronavirus pandemic. She creatively took this photo showing the storefront on the left and yeah. their outdoor dining right. area that they created on the right. Right. Because this um this great, great diner has been in business um, for many years. It's on 8th Avenue in the West Village and it's owned by um, two lovely, lovely people. They've been struggling to survive. They're known for their like breakfast served all day, right, right, but it's right, been yeah. 
so difficult for them because of the, you know, first indoor dining was closed. Um, right. You know, it's really tight place inside. So they always had the outdoor tables that lined the front of the restaurant, which yeah. Sophia captured on the left, but they needed more space because they couldn't pack everybody inside, especially right. at their lunch counter. People. It's like right. one person. Exactly. Because the, if you had ever eaten inside like, here, you're like eating on top of one right. another. It's you know? really, it's really shallow, right. but long. Right. It's a long, so but shallow So that's what the photo place. really captures, how like the store is really long and you say, wow, the place is huge. Right. But you step in and you're like at the back wall. Right. It's only, it's only <laughs> a couple of feet, you right. know, in, right. in depth. So that's, yeah, the photo really captures that. Yeah. So we really like that. She was very creative in the way she photographed yep. it, that, you know, it shows what they had to do to adapt to the coronavirus pandemic. And, you know, we strongly recommend anyone who's in the neighborhood to stop by and, and visit them and help support by yeah, yeah getting a, getting some delicious right. pancakes or whatever you feel like. And they have a privilege sign. Yes, they have a Coca-Cola privilege sign, which you could see, you can barely see the little Coca-Cola privilege sign that yep. they have. That's something um, James and I love. Yeah. That's what something, a privilege sign is actually a sign that was given to them by the Coca-Cola company, hence the word privilege, like it was a privilege to for, you know, to have the sign and also for it to be paid for by the company. But the deal was, is that you could only serve Coca-Cola then. Yeah. Like in order to get that sign paid for right. it, then, you know, and in the 19... seven up ones and right. Pepsi but ones, in the 19... Coke was the most. Right, in the 1930s and 1940s, these privilege signs were very prevalent, but you don't really see them any yep. anymore because first of all, Coca-Cola doesn't pay for free signage anymore. They don't give that away as a pro nope. promotion. And many of them, you know, yeah. the old ones have been torn down or replaced with, yeah. you know, the new yeah. plastic on it. Great photo. Yeah, all around wonderful. So next, in uh, next slide, uh, this is yeah. another beautiful, beautiful sketch by the um, French artist. Uh, she's a, a, you know, from France, yep. Delphine Lagaffe, who also I want to say as part of the East Village Arts Festival because. That's what we're participating in in the Tompkins Square Library. All these works that we're showing, you can physically see at the Tompkins Square Library branch on East 10th Street by B. Um, Delphine is also going to be giving a talk. Um, I believe, is it on, on Saturday, right, Corinne? Uh, it's Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, yes. Right, yeah. so not only is she participating in our workshop, but she's also further participating in the East Village Arts Festival. And she captured this beautiful, beautiful storefront of the Essex card shop, which was, this was their original location on Avenue A, but they recently moved to a new location. So, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Essex card shop first opened in the neighborhood in 2000 and it was, it's owned by Indian and Pakistani immigrants. And they actually moved to this location because where they were like uptown, the rent got too high and they right. were forced out and then they opened um, you know, on Avenue A. And when they opened in year 2000, their rent was only 3,500 a month and it's gone up considerably. I think like 10 years ago when we spoke to them, it was like up to 5,800 a month. And I mean, I guess it got just too much. Yeah, yeah, so uh, unfortunately they just moved out of this old storefront. They only moved like one block north but they didn't take that old sign yeah, into like it. The old sign. Yeah, we really. But we're just happy they're still in business. Yeah, we're happy that they stayed in business. I think their new yeah. store wasn't as big, like right. it wasn't as as um, long, so they right. couldn't take the old sign with them. But we're so happy that Delphine captured it because, to us, we love the old tenement yeah. building, and it yeah. just and so the way cheery. she did it, it was, it's like a really busy storefront. Like it was really a rich visually. When right, you, like lots of When things. you walked up to it, there was like a lot to look at. Right, yeah. they'd sell little postcards and- Postcards. Uh, yeah, you know. we get our typewriter ribbon from there. Yeah, we get our typewriter. We still have typewriters. Yeah, I don't know if you could see when we first started our Zoom interview, you could see in our background, but we have like eight typewriters. Yeah, we still I use. I still they're use all, them. Work, right. yeah, we get I, our ribbon there. Yeah, we get our typewriter ribbon there. And if they don't have it, they the owners will order it for us. Right. So they're, they're super and sweet. And Delphine's detail of that is really, is really fantastic. Right, so colorful and cheery yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. And I think, by the way, the Delphine and many of the artists that are particip participants of our workshop are also selling prints and original uh, artwork. And I think this piece, and I think another piece that's at the library, if, um, if it sells, part of the proceeds do go to the Tompkins Square Library as well. Isn't that right, um, Corinne? Yes, that is right. Delphine has very generously um, given us a, a portion of her proceeds and we appreciate that very much. 
Right, and there's some other artist participants like um, Joel Holland and Nick Ledwick um, and Nicola um, Gooski as well that are doing the, the same thing. They're, um, you know, they're, they're selling prints. So if you're interested, you can always contact us and we can put you in touch with the artists. So next slide is Gertel's Big Shop by Jean Colhall. And I want everyone to know, first of all, like when we first told everybody about this workshop and we have that virtual workshop um, available for everyone to listen to online on our James Carl YouTube channel, we specifically said, everybody go out and photograph a store that's still in business because we wanna help promote the ones that are still around because there's no sense in like, what we say crying over spilt milk right. like we're not going to get back a store that already closed like there's nothing you can do for them from this point forward right. i mean it might be nice that you documented them but it's not helping us with the situation that's happening right now right. especially with the coronavirus so oh. really a i a, a must have for being part of our workshop was that you went out and you photographed or drew or whatever you could do but it had to be a store that was still in business however jane reached out to us and she said you know I really can't do that. And I really wanted to take photos. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna sketch them like some of the artists did. Can I use a photo that yeah. I had taken in the past? And we said, okay, you know, we'll, we'll make a small exception just and because- we were happy with what she sent. Right, because this is Gertel's Bake Shop and this was on that the was Upper East Side. Yeah. And I mean, this bake shop was a closed. It was a German bakery and they specialized in like, uh oh, gingerbread, gingerbread cookies. Houses. They made gingerbread. Oh, at this time of year, I always think about their beautiful gingerbread houses that they always yeah, made spent, at Christmas time. We spent two days with the with the owner and the baker. Right. It As, takes two days to build the house. Right. They bake because they have to make them on piece by piece. So they right. bake all the pieces by hand, right. like all the parts of the house, and then they glue them. You could say glue, but it's with done icing. with icing so, um, together. Right. So all that has to be done in steps. And we spent two days documenting the whole process. Right. So, so we were really happy to yeah, see Yeah, when this. Jane sent us this photo. And the people that work there are so sweet, like, um, it really that really captures it right it was the last i mean people don't realize but the upper east side had a huge german population it actually founded not this not this particular bakery but the east village had a huge german population sure. but sure. then unfortunately they moved a lot of them moved away after the general slocum disaster but they moved up to the upper east Land, um side so it was like a little kleindeschlange just up like yeah. right just like the area around town yeah. square park was so yeah. we were oh there's hudson he's saying hi so for us oh, oh hudson. anybody who knows we have a dog yes that's <laughs> hudson come, come now no, don't worry. Come on. Hey, this, uh, somebody must be delivering a package. So James will get up and tend to Hudson. He's usually very quiet, but when somebody is like right outside the door, we live right up opposite like the yeah. elevator. So whenever he smells like a strange smell that he doesn't recognize as a neighbor, he, you know, he's yep. just protecting. That's what yep. can we say? But all around, we want to tell everyone that we hope that our, our project acts as an artistic intervention to help bring awareness to the unique character that these small mom and pop businesses add to the streets and neighborhoods of New York City and really like the sense of community they provide because these storefronts really have the city's history, you know, etched in their facades. So, uh, you know, uh, right now what we would, um, love to do is to see if anybody that's listening now and joining our zoom conversation has any you know um questions for us because we wanted to leave time to answer anybody's questions and certainly you know we hope to hold this work workshop again in 2021 i mean we hope that it can be in person by then but we're willing to do an online yeah. workshop again um yeah. if if need be, right. you know, we'll, we'll see that will we'll be for the spring, but please stay in touch with us because we hope to do this again. And one real quick thing. I have a t-shirt on from B and H dairy who really, really needs your help right now. Right. Carl has a t-shirt on from beauty bar on 14th street who really, really needs your help right now. Right. So if you go to the next slide, I believe that we have some, um, some slides Corinne of the actual show at, the you know at the library One so more. let's see if yeah. 
Yep, yep, there we go. There we so go. So for, when you go up the stairs, you'll see the work. Right. For, for those who cannot go to Tompkins Square Library, here's a, a little a slide of the participants, um, you know, artwork. And then if it, and there's one more slide, I, I believe, that shows a little bit in more in detail. Yep. And it really, we have some things in the showcase as well, like Delphine Lagoff's uh, work is in, inside the showcases. So that was difficult to photograph with the reflections. But most of it's like, it's like, you know, grab and go with the library. So you can't stay very long because it's just like, you're supposed to get right. what you need and leave. But this is right in the area where you first go up the stairs and you're returning your like books and, books other, and materials. other materials. Yeah. So you can't miss it. So yeah. we encourage everyone yeah. to see it in person. And of course, to yeah. go and support these mom and pop stores. Yeah. The and as, yeah. as James was, was pointing out, we're both wearing t-shirts by small businesses in our neighborhood, which are struggling, which is B&H Dairy, and that's and on we Second do, we Avenue. Went, we went there yesterday to get um, so get some brunch and helps and say hi to Ola. They have the street closed now because of the horrific fire. Right, that, that happened place. like not it, even on the same right. block. It was like it was diagonally right. and, uh, across the street and a block away. Because Ola and Fozzie are so sweet. We're like, what more could they get thrown at them? Right. I mean, and we were there the, Saturday they're morning. They're trying to deal with outdoor dining. Right. They, they dealt with the gas explosion years ago. That was ago. 2015. There 2015. was a big gas explosion. They dealt explosion. with 9 11. I mean, and now they have the street closed. We right, the fire department closed the street. The the, the fire is out. Because the building's co coming down. Right, they're, they're they're taking down the building that was destroyed by the fire early right. Saturday morning. So as soon as they open up, we got to get over there. Yeah, so, I mean, like, you know, they don't need to be closed right. even one day because right. then they have to throw out all their food that they had prepared and everything right. like that. You know, it's a big, big deal. And when... Beauty Bar on 14th is showing Christmas, right. vintage Christmas classics in their TV in their window right. and they have a little patio set up so it's a fun time at night they show uh christmas classics and stuff and those guys are great right and they're struggling because of the limited indoor seating and you know yeah. outdoor dining is really dependent on the weather i mean they told us on friday night that it was so cold that they had like one customer i mean that's it like you can't survive on no. with one customer i think they told us i mean because i just saw the um long time bartender brock that you know they need two dollars that's it. Two bucks. The whole night, whole Friday night. So, you know, people think, oh, wow, I went by a place and it's hopping. Well, that might be one night, yeah. but that doesn't mean the next yeah. night and the next night that it isn't. So, I mean, we can't mm -hmm. trust that enough um, to go out and support your local mom and pop stores. Now more than ever. You can yeah. buy merchandise, like we're wearing buy, the t-shirt. Buy a so, t-shirt. Yeah. You know, Anything. whatever you can do. I mean, if you, and if you can't support, at least you can help spread the word by like, that's what we did with these yeah. workshop participants. If you can take a photo, share on social media and say, hey, yeah. you know, I can't go and support this place. Maybe, you know, financially it's not right for me right, right. now, but I can take a picture. Yeah, Taking a photo just, is free. Right. Sharing a photo is free. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, the <laughs> library, we really want to thank Tompkins yes. Square. Yes, Tompkins Square Library, can't thank you enough. Another and East Village Community, Community Coalition. Coalition. They've been a huge help. Right, for partnering with us. And also, I want to thank our other generous sponsors, which is the Municipal Art Society of New York. MAS. Um, MAS, Village Preservation, and also LMCC, which is the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, because without their um without their support without their seed money we, help, we couldn't yeah. have um put this all together so we want to yeah. thank them as well yeah so yeah let's open it up to questions because we have like around 20 minutes yes thank you so much james and carla and if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask a question you can do that now i think we got a lot in the chat which i'm just going to take a look at but if anyone is um feeling brave and wants to speak up speak up yes, now. oh yeah from Rocky. Yes, yeah, thank we were you, really, Rocky. Really excited. Yeah, we were so happy. And this is only, we only showed tonight because we didn't have, you know, like hours and hours to share with you right. a small portion of the participants' work. So it's all available to see at Mom and Pop Storefront. So that's uh, the Instagram account we created yeah, Mom and Pop for the workshop. So it's at Mom, A, and then spell out A N D, Mom and Pop, P O P, storefronts. Yeah, and you can see everything everyone did. It was yeah, so and I, I have more to post because this people, some participants gave us like multiple works. So I'm still posting, I'm trying to catch up with it all. <laughs> Uh, I see someone asked if there are more prints at the exhibit than what you showed here tonight. Yes, there there certainly is. There is. We only showed one photo or, or artwork for each participant, right. but there's many, many yeah, more. Yeah, we used to do this live with a big slide projector. 
right. and we would just all engage with the artists. It was fun. Right. We you know, had limited space at the library. Yeah. So we, you know, we didn't, we didn't get to frame everything and, and put up everything. But um, some of the participants, they were nice enough actually to frame in their, the work themselves because, you know, we wanted to preserve their work. And um, when they did a sketch, we can't just, you know, tack it up on the wall. No. Um, you know, it has to be framed properly. Are you going to so they shut did up? that themselves. And yeah, there's, there's many more works to see. But if you can't go to the library Let itself, you can't questions. get at mom and pop storefronts. Mm -hmm. uh, I see someone else asked uh, how they can know about more upcoming workshops. Oh yeah, so you can follow us um, at, at the at mom and pop storefronts. That's our like exhibition workshop um, yep. account on and Instagram. At James and Carla. And our, our personal account is at James and Carla. So it's J-A-M-E-S-A-N-D-K-A-R-L-A. -A -A. Yeah, Carla with a K. Yep. Right, Carla with a K. You can also, you can DM us, you know, direct message us. Um, but we're always posting. You know, our email is on there because we- We're on the Twitter. Right, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, everything. So yeah, just reach out to us. And as soon as we know, I mean, it really depends on the virus and like, honestly, what happens with it. I hope to make an announcement by March. March. Um, hope, hope, fingers crossed. Yeah, that for next summer. For, for next spring that we'll be holding a right. workshop again. I'll yeah. definitely make the announcement like probably late February, early March. So, uh, you know, I think we'll know better by then, you know, cause then the worst part of the winter will be over. I, yeah. I hope. <laughs> I see that Delphine has her hand raised. Delphine, um, go ahead. You want to ask a question? Hi, Delphine. Oh, hi, Delphine. Delphine's one of our workshop participants. She yeah, she had her work on uh, Avenue B on a flea market. Yes, yeah, she, yeah. She's been she's been trying to um, you know be creative that way. Yeah. And now she has a, a little shop that she's se selling her work out of in the East Village now as well. Yeah, it's awesome. She is muted. Maybe she is trying to unmute herself now. Um, so Delphine, if you want to unmute yourself, go ahead and ask a question. Uh, go, oh, I think she's unmuted now. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Let me, yes. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Actually, um, when I raised her hand, I was just like waving and saying hello. <laughs> but yeah. Hi, everybody. And thank you so much again for having me. And um, you're going to have me again on Saturday afternoon. That's uh, that's, that's right. Yes, we told everyone about that too. So uh, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, she's going to be doing a, all, her own yeah, artist yeah, talk. Looking forward to it. Yes, we are. Thank you. Me too. Yeah, me too. I'm very very, very excited fun. about it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? Let me see. I don't see any more hands going up. Oh, one more question I see from Austin Hutchinson. Okay, let's see. Yep. Great job, Mac. Yep. Oh, and, and from Mac, one of our another workshop participants, I think, just said something as I well. I saw it pop up during the talk. Someone asked, um, what does Delphine do or work with? And I believe Delphine responded markers. She can correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Delphine, are you still on? Are you um, muted? Yep. Oh, Greg oh, hey, Masters Greg. said, hey, James and Carla. Yep. And yes, Greg Masters probably heard uh, Hudson. <laughs> yes, ah. it's Markers. Markers, yes. Oh, Markers. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's what we thought. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And Austin, yeah. did Austin have a question he wanted to ask? He or she wanted to ask? Yeah, just out of, oh. I guess like uh, curiosity or just kind of trying to figure it out in my mind. Is there any way to kind of like use like the exposure from the photography and the art to sort of drive customers traffic like maybe in a given week like highlighting you know one or two shops and you know almost like sort of marketing them for a week or you know maybe like a sale they're gonna have or a special and actually kind of converting you know all of this affection uh that you know really comes out you know almost you know automatically from so many people who really enjoy and like yeah. well i mean definitely Great because idea. that's yeah. what i mean honestly that's been our mission for yeah. years and years and right. years yeah. now that's why we, but post, if we could coordinate the two that would be right fantastic. That, i mean we post on instagram on our own account the james and carla account every single day and you know we do that for free like we don't charge the businesses that we photograph right, like, drive i mean and, yeah. and we buy things there like we don't ask for free food just no. because we go and eat there and put it up on our instagram account <laughs> which has a lot of followers 
I mean, it's, uh, you know, we basically are giving them free advertising. And the reason we do that is because we want people to know about the struggle. I mean, right. every single day since like, well, we do this every day anyway, but since March, because our own like photography business, because we're professional photographers, um, you know, that's what we do for a living. Yep. Um, you know, really a, a lot of our jobs got canceled. So we had even more time to be honest. Right. All we did was walk our neighborhood and walk and walk and walk. And and we photographed and documented it. We went into every store. Not only did we take a picture, but that's why we started our YouTube channel. Yeah, that's a great idea. Is, yeah, yeah, we've trying to help raise awareness. I mean, yeah. we've been partnering with other YouTubers that like are really popular and have super popular YouTube accounts too to help spread the word because the power of social media is yeah, it can't be underestimated. It can't be underestimated. And a lot of small businesses, they especially if they have an older, um, you know a person that right. that owns them they may not be as social media savvy, tech savvy and right. tech savvy and realize right. that, that basically putting something out in social media can ha help save a, a business i mean right. that's what happened to astor place hairstylist yep. astor place yeah. hairstylist they you know we, we put it out there that they were um going to close and then because of the media attention that they got yeah. an investor came in and, and helped save the business so they're right. still open today because of that so yep. For sure. I mean, this is the whole reason we're holding these free workshops is because we want others to go out and photograph it, put it out there, put it on your social media. It doesn't matter if you have 10 followers, no. that's 10 people that can support a store. Right. You know, that that's 10, 10 people times, even if they only spend a dollar, that can yeah. make or break a business. It yeah. really, 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 really could. Really so yeah. yeah, I mean, that's why we're, we did, held these workshops. That's why we plan to continue right. doing so. But yeah, whatever. I mean, if there's a big media company that or somebody right. that wants to help, we're yeah. we're happy to promotions, help. Promotions, like he said. Yeah, do yeah. promotions, whatever we can. I mean, that's yeah, what, any idea. You know, we donate our time. You know, yeah. and and you know, we try to do whatever yeah. we can. But we're just two people. Right. You know, that's why we held these free workshops because we felt like okay, let's get more people out there right. documenting the stores. And if everybody knows somebody who knows somebody. Then it just right. spirals. It's like a domino effect, you right. know, of, of everybody just helping yeah, it's everyone. It's an extraordinary right. time in New York City for business right now. Yeah. I mean it's we've had business owners say they're ready to go down with the ship. Yeah. They, they they've faced, I mean, the business I'm thinking of has been open since the late 1800s. Right. Veneros past the Syria. Yeah. I mean, I'm using their their mug right now, right. you can see. Yeah. And yeah, 1894. He, he came out and said it. He's like, I'm I'm doing all I can. I'm going down with the ship right now. Right, because they they did close for a while. Um, they I mean they're a food business, so they could have stayed open, but he didn't want to put his uh, workers in danger. You know, he had workers yep. coming in on the train and yep. and doing all the baking. He's got his son Frankie with him now. Frankie's awesome. Yes, Frankie uh, sells T-shirts on Avenue B. Yeah, during yeah. the flea market. So. So yeah, I mean, it's even if you the business owns the building, like yes, Veneros owns their building, and Russ and Daughters and Katz's yeah, own their building. That is not. That's not the, the reason for them to stay in, in business. That's not like, okay, um, you're set. That doesn't mean anything because they still have to pay taxes with no customers coming in. And if they want to keep their, all their employees, I mean, Katz's has a lot of employees and so does Russ and Daughters. And I know Russ and Daughters had to lay off a number of employees. Yep. And, yep. you know, it's, it's, it's very, very sad. So there's a lot of groups like, um, EVCC uh, and Avima and I mean, Save NYC. Right. There's a lot of local groups that are Save, trying right, to do, sure. you know, whatever they can. But yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, whatever group latch on to a group and run with it. Yeah. And we're happy to help in any way we can. Yep. And more casually, I think Evie Greaves team does such a great job at highlighting things that are happening like today, tomorrow, you know, oh, Wednesday. Sure. Right, but I mean, this is, you know, it's not just the East Village, even though we are sure. East Village residents, it's, this is a, this is a problem oh. that's happening in all five boroughs, in fact, all around the world. So, yeah. you know, whatever we can do, I mean, even if you document something in your own neighborhood, it might spur people to document things in their sure. neighborhood, wherever that may be. So, I mean, this is a worldwide problem now, like right. I feel, you know. Right, Broadway businesses have been killed. Right, I mean, just because, you know, we walked around um, the theater district and that's, so, I it's, mean. It's a horror show. Yeah, it's it's yeah. been decimated. And one like the last thing I'll add is that you know on sure. Curb today they made they had this piece uh, as part of their annual you know sort of what we love right they use our photos yes that's what because they they're with um owned with the same company that owns New York Magazine yes yeah 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 and um 
I mean, I, I, I think it's really important. And it was like, I, you know, obviously, you know, poured through it today and it was very sad. But I think on the you know other side of that, I think you know, everything you guys do and, you know, all, all the, you know, related sort of enterprises, you know, having like that optimistic kind of like these businesses are still here. These ones yep. haven't closed down. Look at how great right. they are. They feel even better when you're standing right in front of them. You think going somewhere. Exactly. That's, that's 100% why, correct. That's why we, that's what I said for our workshop, we made it like pretty much a prerequisite that you must photograph and document the place that's still in business. Because like I said, for us, it's always been about a celebration of the businesses that are still yeah. open. Not like yeah. boo-hoo and like, oh my yeah, God. Minor and, piano oh, keys. right. This business closed and like, oh, you know, right. everyone says, oh, New York is dead. New York is never going to be dead. I'm a lifelong New Yorker. New York right. will always been around. Like no, we're, no, no. we're survivors. That... However, we need to rally together and support these these small places. But you know, worrying about something that is already closed that that doesn't do anybody any good. We need to support the businesses that are still around. And and you know, even if they're not struggling right now, that doesn't mean they won't. Be, oh, here's Hudson. That they won't be struggling tomorrow or the next day. You know, um, you you just you know, who would have thought? Even I mean, if you had asked me, yeah. just whatever, like nine months ago, would I think that a virus would so negatively affect so many small businesses in New York? I'd be like, what, no. what are you talking about? Yeah. Just, that doesn't make any sense. So yes, um, I agree. A, a positive, we are, are very positive yeah. people. And I feel a positive attitude goes a long way. And yeah, just try to support the ones that are still around while you can. Yeah. You know? And it's the best thing. document them for sure. Get off the computer and get out there. <laughs> But it used to be easy to say that, but now it's now. Well, now get on the computer because yeah, social media, yes, you know, get on your phone because social media is, is definitely a powerful factor. Thank you, Austin. Uh, thank you so much, James and Carla. I always learn so much from you and I get inspired by your enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, I don't know if anyone knows actually any further questions. Uh, I did want to point out quickly, I see East Village Vintage Collective is here. Uh, so oh, that's yeah. Megan, hi. A great yeah. local business. And uh, they oh, put yeah. in the yes, chat. Delphine um, did a beautiful um, a sketch of those with her markers as well. Um, she said that that's one of her favorite businesses. She gets a lot of her uh, clothing from there. She wears a lot of vintage clothes. So uh, we thought that was extra cool. Like that not only did she sketch it, but she also is, you know, a customer there. Yeah, well, I'm um, getting kisses from Hudson. Hi, Hudson. East Village uh, Vintage Collective and Delphine and a number of local artists have started a pop-up shop. I don't know if everybody knows. It's a holiday market, Third and Bazaar. It's on Third Street near Avenue B. Uh, they have a lot of things oh, for cool. sale by local artists and artisans. And I went to do some holiday shopping there the other day and got a few things. So if nice. you don't know yeah, about it, so check that out. Their calendars, I saw that it's really great. And I don't know if anyone else has any further questions. Um, Carla and James, you're always so nice and uh, <laughs> so eager to, to share your knowledge. Uh, um, well, nobody yeah. else has any further questions. I think we can start to, to wrap things up now. Thank oh, you thank so you much, awesome. everybody, for coming. Yeah. It's been wonderful to thanks see we've had over, over 50 people here. So thank you. Right. Oh, that's yeah, Thanks that's for fantastic. doing it uh, virtually with us this year. It's new for us. I'm sure it's new for some of you guys. Right. Um, and it was fun. It yeah. Was fun. And we were a little know, concerned, you know. We had a little Zoom kinks. We got muted at one point. We don't even know how because yeah. we didn't touch the mute yeah, button. Yeah, we were upside down. At first. Yeah, we were upside down at first. I mean, <laughs> then like the, the sound went yeah. out, the sound came back in. Yeah, she straightened us out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we got it. We're like, we'll be Zooming all over the but place. Stay safe, you know. everyone. And yeah, we can't thank everybody enough. And yeah, just please, you know, feel free to reach out to us. I mean, I, I try to personally um, answer every message that's sent on you know via instagram sure. or email yeah. Yeah, we love if, it. yeah we love it and, and any suggestions of businesses that you know in your neighborhood that help that need the support that we can personally help that we might have photographed yep. please feel free to reach out to us because yep. um you know we might not be aware that they're struggling you know I mean, we try to walk as much as we can. You know, we, we haven't taken the train that much. We have, but not that much. So there might be some in the outer boroughs that we're right. not aware of. So, you know, we're we're happy for anybody to call attention to it. And yeah, wherever we'll, they are. Well, yeah. wherever they are, and, and we'll yeah. do our best to help support them. Yeah, but thanks, everybody. Yes, thank you, Gail. Yeah.
Thank oh, yes. Yeah. So we'll we, we can put that Instagram. If, um, Corinne, are you able to do that on your end? Put the at mom and pop storefronts okay, in the. Yeah, um... I'll do that right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's perfect. It's at mom and pop storefronts, right? Oh, right. Thanks, so and then thanks, your regular at, one is at James and Carla. Yep, just right? did. Yep. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yep, yes. James and Carla. Yep. You can always find us there. Right. You can always find us there. And the video that's on um, the workshop video from 2020 is on our at James and Carla YouTube channel. So that's, um, you know, somebody can just right. search if they go. That was to like the first part of this. Right. That was what the participants who participated this year they watched the video and they you know they tried to um we it's not like we taught people how to take a photo or no. how to speak to the owner but we just gave uh, like little motivation. tips yeah. and motivation like helpful yeah. little things that we've learned over the years because we've been documenting these places for over 20 years so yep, we kind of use like yeah. our collective knowledge of like how best to approach like what to do because some people especially uh, in the interview process they're afraid because sure. they want to just stay behind the camera like that's why they became a photographer they not they don't want to approach the right. the you know the store owner and ask them pointed questions so we kind of gave people tips on how best to do that yeah, as I, well yeah. so yeah check it out thank All you right. so much guys i mean it was yeah. Really, Thanks, really Tom great. Park library yes, too. and Tompkins Square Park Library for not only hosting this Zoom oh, conversation great. for our curator talk, but the physical exhibition of the participants' workshop, um, you know, creations this year. It looks really wonderful, and we hope everyone can visit it and yep. help spread the word. Cool. Thank you. Yes, please Good do night. stop by and wear your mask. Yeah, yes. Wear your mask. <laughs> 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 and temperature check at the library now too. Yeah. Just stay safe. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Thank bye you. bye. <sighs>